love Daddy Freeze, use Wave. Because Daddy Freeze trusts Wave. Hi guys, I'm Daddy Freeze, convener of the Free the Sheeple movement and leader of the Free Nation in Christ. Um, I've got a lady whose story I'd like to share. Both her parents are pastors. And she's been through so much in life. And she feels very hurt because these are Christians. Not just Christians, pastors. And she herself is an ordained pastor. All right, guys. So let me present to you O.V. James. Pastor O.V. James. O.V. James is the daughter of a G.O., a Pentecostal G.O., uh, who goes by the name James. Um, and she's going to be talking about her mom, Timitayo James. And uh, both of them, uh, am I correct, run the El Shaddai Covenant Ministries. Is that correct? Correct. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Obi Jane. And um, here to give you uh, my story, I'm going to do my best to keep it short. Um, but the foundation is, um, I'm the firstborn of um, James, O. James, and Timmy Kyle James. It used to be Irobe, but um, it was changed to James. And um, I was the first child, and I grew up in Joss. We all grew up in Joss. They started the ministry, you know, when I was, I think either before I was born or right when after I was born. So my life was always um, ministry, you know, my life was always church, church. Um, and we were also very restricted, like we couldn't really have friends like that. We, we, were, we didn't really have social life, it was mostly church, school, church, school. So, and another thing that was difficult for me as a child was the fact that, um, I was. I felt. I knew I was different. I looked different, and I felt different. What and makes you feel I you look very... different? You look like a normal woman. What makes you feel you look different? Sorry, I'm interrupting. Well, that's fine. That's fine. I have to say that. Um, I'm really dark skinned, and um, at that time my siblings were light skinned, and so they would call me like, like Obi Dodo, you know, names like that. They actually Obi got it from like uncles and aunties. So uncles would call me like my dad's brothers would call me Obi Dodo and um, my mom would call me Blackie, you know, other people they would call me Blackie. So and Blackie was more than Obi Dodo. Yeah, I found it uncomfortable because why should I why should I be made fun of because of the color of my skin? Hmm. And why um, don't they make fun of the rest for the color of your? I mean, they might sometimes hear me say yellow purple, but that's about it. You know what I'm saying? And at that time, there was a lot of discrimination where, when if you're light skinned, you you um you you're preferred. You know, you're preferred for marriage, you're preferred for being a model, you're just preferred when you're light, you know, when your complexion is light. So it made me, um, not, it's not like I didn't want to be dark skinned, but sometimes I wasn't happy about it. But I would look at myself in the mirror and I'll tell myself I'm beautiful. And that's what kept me going. Okay. So, um... At what time did your parents start ministry? Have you, have they, were they always running um, a ministry or it was something that um, came at a later part? They're always running ministry. Um, they started when I was born. Actually, the, my dad was a pastor with um, Archbishop Benson Idahosa's church. Okay. And he ordained him to be a pastor. So, um, and after a while, he left that church and started his own, which was right when I was born. Hmm. So I was, yeah, I was kind of like, all my life was church. Okay, so did you like it? Is it something you, is? do you have memories of growing up as a church girl uh, that are fond memories? No, the fond memories I have was when I was in boarding school. Wow, so... 
you can't look back at any time in your house and say, wow, I had a good time here, I had a good time there. Well, we had a garden when I was, sometimes I spent a lot of time in the garden and I would, I would be there by myself, talking to the plants and eating the fruits. So, yeah, that, I, I enjoyed that part of just being by myself. But not, the fun, like, my, when I think about fun and things that I enjoyed, it starts from high school, and which was not, actually middle school, which is GS at one. And, um... It was a boarding school. Mm. Okay, now um, let's talk about you. You said you were married. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, I was married. Um, I think it was when I was twenty-two. I met this guy at a real estate school. And, okay. Um, he was a minister in church and. At that time, honestly, I had stopped going to church. I, 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 I okay, to you church. are a pastor's a, daughter who had stopped going to church. Yes, because I came Sorry, here quickly, and I... Sorry, um, Why did you stop? I had a bad experience at um, reading Jesus House Baltimore. And it was a situation where um, my friend, boyfriend, attacked me, had me in a chokehold. It was really bad. Um, cops were called type situation. So when I went back to church, like those just bickering about me and it just made me feel so uncomfortable. And so I just stopped going. Why did he have you in a chokehold? <laughs> well, I was at her place and he just walked in. I was watching TV and then he walked in and changed the channel. And I'm like, uh, I was watching that and he just got mad. You were blah, 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 blah. Next thing on top of me. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay, so um, you are telling us about the man you met. Yeah, so um, he was a great guy. He was a musician. And that's actually how we connected because I sing a lot and um, he plays so many instruments. Mm. And um, so we connected on that level. We connected also because we were both in real estate class. And for some reason, he knew it. He knew the material more than me, so he was helping, helping me out. And um, so... Um, it just so happened, it's like the second day we went to church, we went to his church. Mm. And it's like he pulled me back in and um, I felt like, you know what, this is a good guy. This is a guy that um, my dad would like because, you know, he's a Christian, he's a man of God, you know. And he, I they didn't know that I stopped going to church. I just, I just kept it to myself that, you know, I stopped going to church. So um, eventually he proposed to me. Okay. And um, my family. Okay, my family found out that <laughs> he was already living with me. Okay. Right, when he proposed to me, and um, they didn't like that. Okay, he was so, a man of God, um, and he was living with you. Yes, we were living together. And you are not married. And we were not married. And he's a man of God. He was a pastor. Yes. And, um, but you guys were not having sex. We were. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Continue. We I'm listening. So, um, so, um, so when they found out, they we upset. And they were like, go back to redeem and go find an African man to marry. Okay, and he was like, not an African man. No, he's, he's African-American. Okay. Uh, wow. Uh, I thought the fact that he's black is enough. He must be African. Oh, no, he has to be African, yo. And, and true, 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 he got to be Yoruba. <laughs> Who was pushing this? Both of them. Both your parents? Yes. And they're both pastors? And they're both pastors. Oh, my goodness. All right. Continue. So, um... So, I kept, you know, I kept trying to get them to reason with me because what pains me was I never ever thought I would experience something like this with them. Like he's black, I'm black. Like you don't have any problems with his character. You have a problem with his color. I don't understand. You know, it, it, I'm like, okay, this is discrimination. So I got mad, of course. And then um, so there was a 
friction in our relationship. We stopped talking for some time. And because we stopped talking, they stopped paying my school fees. And um, which, even with school, I had, I had to go take a lot of student loan debt while I was, um, student loans while I was in school. Okay, so your parents so, refused to pay your school fees because you were dating a black pastor. Yes. <clears throat> wow. And the thing is, when they met him, they actually met him before they found out that we were together. The first time they met him, they thought he was my friend, and they really liked him. Oh, they liked him enough as your friend, but he was the wrong yes. tribe. Okay. Wow. Yes. Yes. Wow. That's, okay. that's pretty much what it is. So did you it eventually was. get married to this guy? Yes, I did. And how did that turn out? Eventually, well, we had a, we just went to court and kept it simple. Um, I was just starting my career. He was just starting his career. So we didn't feel the need to have a big wedding. Plus, my, my family wasn't even um, interested. So we just went to court and um, kept it simple. Um, initially, um, right after I had a miscarriage and then I think a month later, I, I um, got pregnant with Glenn. Okay, Glenn's your Glenn. son. Glenn, yes, my son. Okay. So Glenn is his son too, and his okay. name is Glenn too. <laughs> okay, so you named him Glenn Jr. Yes. Okay, I named you... him after his father because his father was the only person that was there for me during my pregnancy, and my pregnancy was very rough. It was. So your mother didn't call you? No. Throughout your pregnancy? Throughout. Because you got married to a black man. That's not African. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, how's the relationship between you and Glenn? Are you guys still together? Yeah, we're together. Um, Right now, we we are together now, but there was a time we were not together. Um, He was with them. No, I mean Glenn Senior now. <clears throat> oh, Glenn Senior! Oh no, 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 no! He's moved on. Um, I, I think he got remarried. And um, what happened? Why? What led to that breakdown? Um, well, I think the foundation, the fact that because he he reached out to my dad, he sent my dad an email pleading with my dad, um, you know, trying to reconcile, trying to, you know. Make peace, you know, let's move forward in peace. But my dad ignored his email. And then he started seeing the way they treated me. And I honestly feel like that's why he started treating me the way he did. Because as soon as I had Glenn, he just changed. And it was like, oh, he became, became jealous. He said, I, I, I'm I, putting so much attention on my son than him. And, um... It was, it was weird for me. I'm like, he's a baby. He needs all the attention, you know? And the more he did that, the more he accused me of um, doing that, the more he pushed me away. And then um, eventually it, it got really bad, and I was like, I can't do this anymore. Um, he, because he said getting physical. He got physical once in the, in the parking lot at Walmart. It was very bad. Um, the police were almost called, but... He, you know, he's a, he knows he, he's very good with his words, so he was able to get himself out of that situation. But he knows everybody. He knows the commissioner of police. He knows the mayor of the city. He knows everybody. So, move forward. I think it was around September. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. Like, I can't. I'm not happy. This is not working. And then he was like, okay, let's go to therapy. We go to therapy. The first time we went to therapy, he did not like the therapist because they were like straight up calling him out on the stuff that he was doing. He didn't like that. So he was like, um, he, he doesn't want to go anymore. I was like, okay, let's find someone that doesn't know me or you and we'll go. So I found like a, a professional therapist through my job. Did it work? He never showed up. I was the one going to therapy by myself. Okay, so that's how that marriage ended. Yeah, and then one day he tried to attack me, and um, I, I was like, that's it. And I called um, a, a friend of mine, and I was like, come get me. I'm ready. I packed the bag, I took my son, and he left. Okay, now that you've left this guy, did that 
repair your relationship with your parents? Not really, because when I, it was like more of I told you so, I told you so, now we got to deal with your divorce. Now, then it's like they wanted me to change my son's name because my son's name is his father's name. It was, it was just so stressful. Like, it was, it was like from one trauma to another trauma, you know what I'm saying? Like, and then I just left this man like a month ago. And my dad calls me and he's like, so when are you going to come home and get married? Uh, like that, wow. we're not even divorced yet. Hmm. Like we're not even divorced yet. Like I'm still even trying to. I'm, I was scared to even get out of the house. Like for, for thirty days, I didn't leave the house because there was a man across the street that looked like my ex husband, and I was terrified of him. So for a good thirty days, I didn't leave the house, and he's calling me talking about I should come to Nigeria and come and find husband and marry. I'm like. Who finds husband? Like, that's just not my thing. You know? Okay. Like, okay. So, um, you said there was a time Glenn was with your parents. <clears throat> yeah. How did that happen? Well, um, I hadn't gotten sick a lot. I have to have... So, I'm having surgery back to back. And I call my What's mom. What's wrong with you? Well, right now I have um, fibromyalgia. And um, not just fibromyalgia, PTSD, depression, and anxiety. Okay, can you um, can you please tell us in lay terms what exactly this is, so people can understand? Okay, fibromyalgia is um, it's a disease that causes pain, hmm. and it's widespread widespread pain throughout your body, and it's it affects the muscles. They got muscle pain, nerve pain, joint pain, and a lot of weakness. So it makes you so weak. Like, it makes me so weak, I can't walk. Mm. It, it got that bad that I can't walk. So now I'm on a wheelchair, and... Um, <clears throat> so you're on a wheelchair yeah. now? Yeah. <clears throat> wow. Now... How supportive have been have your parents been? Um, is you said there was a time when you couldn't get um, Glenn for a while that your parents took him and said you couldn't take care of him. Tell us about that. Yeah, um, when I was having all the surgery, when my mom kept okay, they told me they wanted me to go to grad school, and at that time, honestly, I wasn't ready for school because I just finished. My bachelor's and um, I got I did my bachelor's finished it after I had blood, so it was even harder. I finished my bachelor's and um, I wanted a break because I was working and schooling it was just too much. So I wanted a break, but they're like, no, masters, masters, you can't function without a masters. So um, I eventually agreed, went to um, grad school, but it was kind of like a setup because when I started doing grad school, they're like. Well, now, see, you're so busy, you can't, you know, it's just too much on you, it's too much. I'm like, I'm okay, I'll cope, I'll be fine. Because at that point, my sister moved away, she moved out of town, my brother moved out of town, so it was just me. Hmm. And, yeah, so she was like, um, you know, let, let's take him for a while, you know, maybe when you're done with your master's, you know, and you're doing okay, you can come back and get him, and you can come to him at any time. And so I looked her in the eye and I said, when I'm ready and when I want my son, I want him back. No, no, um, wahala. I, just, I would just get my baby back. And she said, yes, yeah. but that's not what happened. Because this was your mom or your I, sister? My mother. Okay. So what now happened? They didn't want to let you have the baby back? In fact, it was crazy because. When he left, I said anything him so much. He left, and then, um, <laughs> and then, okay, they were pressuring me so much to get married. This is the part that really drove me insane. The um, pressure to get married. So um, they were pressuring me to get married, mm. and of course, it was they wanted an African person. So at that time. Uh, me and my high school sweetheart, we kind of got back 
together and we were talking and stuff. And so, you know, he was saying, you know, things like, you know, I want to spend the rest of my life with you, all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, listen, it's been a while. I have changed. I know I have changed. I've been married. I've been, I've been through life. And I'm, I'm very sure you have changed. So we're going to have to spend time together before we can start, you know, going further. Yeah. So I told my parents about him and they were like, oh, no, because I wanted to come in August, the following month, and um, spend some time in Nigeria, spend time with my son, and spend some time with him. And, and they're like, no, you can't come. Somebody prophesied that there's going to be danger. There's danger. You cannot come. They prophesied danger. I'm like, what kind of prophecy? Like, I haven't been home in a while. I want to come home. I want to see my son. Said, no. Yeah, I want to <clears> see my son. I want to come home. So no, somebody prophesied, they prophesied danger, danger, that all the three of us, that me and my siblings, we cannot travel that year. I'm like, okay, this is crazy. So, um, I bought my ticket wow. anyway. Yeah, I bought my ticket anyway, and I went home. And there I was no home. danger. Mama, there was no danger, like, you know what I'm saying? There was no danger. <laughs> So when I get there, my mom wasn't even tired of hugging me. Like, she wasn't happy to see me. Then the following day, because the mistake I made was, I usually when I leave Nigeria, I try to live with some Nigerian cash. But I hadn't been to Nigeria in a while, so all I had was dollars. And I wanted to make some phone calls, because I just got in. So I was like, uh, Mom, can I have five and a half so um, a house help can get me credit so I can make phone calls? And she just laughed out at me. Didn't you bring your own money? Didn't you bring your own money? This is over 500 naira. Like, I know it's 500,000 a lot, but 500 naira is nothing. And she's screaming at me. Oh, didn't you bring your money? Didn't you bring your money? And your, your mother money is a pastor. So bad. She's a pastor. And she's screaming over you for 500 naira that you want to make a phone call with. 500 naira. That doesn't mean, it, that, that means nothing to her. Wow. Wow. So, um, yeah, I cried that day. I was in a lot of pain that day. And then... Um, Did you come with I your wheelchair or you were not yet on the wheelchair then? Oh, no. Then I was not in a wheelchair. I was strong, able. I was working in the estate. I used to run every morning and every evening. I was very active. I, okay. I drove in Lagos. I mean, I was a very active person. I did um, concerts. I did videos. I would drive myself, organize the choir, everything like... I, I was that kind of person, a very driven person, you know? So, um, what now? You, you saw Glenn. I saw Glenn, and um, the mistake that I made is I said I think he was me. Um, but I didn't. <clears throat> I came back, and then um, the following year I wanted him to come, and he said no. And I said, why? They said, well, you're single, you're not married, um, a woman cannot raise a man, um, so many things. And I'm just like, it, 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 it damaged my self-esteem. It did, it did a lot of work on my self-esteem because it made me feel like I wasn't good enough to take care of my own child. Hmm. So how were you able to get Glenn eventually? Um, I put my foot down I, because I had I've been visiting every year. I used to go; they, they have a annual conference every year, and I will minister in song. So, um, so you are on the year. pulpit of your parents' church ministering in song, and you're devastated and unhappy. Yes, and then and then they ordain me pastor. Wow. They don't think you could take care of a child, but you can handle a congregation. Take care of the flock. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow, wow. So, this is, this is, yeah. yeah. So you're an ordained pastor? Yes, I am. Uh, let me remove my hat and bow for you, Pastor Mrs. Uh, please don't bow for me. Please, I beg. I beg. Now, um, yeah, you were, you were telling us, so how were you able to, you, you had to put your foot down and take your... I put my foot down, and I was like, because this will happen. They had been coming to America, and every time they come, they stress my life out. Like, 
I have to drop everything. I tell my friends, my friends are coming to you. You're not going to hear from me for a while. I go shopping. I make sure everybody's comfortable. I'm the driver. I'm the cook. I'm the stylist. I'm the dresser. I'm everything. The cleaner. I'm everything. Because, you know, in America, we don't have um, health help. Um, you know, we, I know, I know, I know. We don't have that. Yeah, I went to so, visit even my rich friends in Canada and they were like, take your shoes off. Nobody's going to sweep after you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, um, it's like that here. You have, you're very independent in every aspect of your Someone life. Someone is asking, how old was your son at that time? When he finally came back? Yeah, around the time when um, they, didn't, they wouldn't let you see him. Oh, when they won't let me see him was um, from three, and then eventually when he was five, he came here, and then he was having a hard time adjusting here. It, it was bad. They told me to homeschool him, and I didn't have an idea of what homeschooling is, because my son is not a person that can fit in a traditional school. And I tried to homeschool him, he wasn't working, he wasn't taking me seriously. Um, I wish I tried harder, but I didn't, and I took him back to my dad. Wow. And then, yeah. And then, um, of course, I go there, I told you so again. Like, y'all gonna be told me so all my life. <laughs> mm. Mm. So, um, so, yeah, after that, I got settled, and I was like, okay, I want my son back. Because as a mother, when... First of all, I'm already divorced, so I've lost, like, my family's broken. And then, the only one thing that I wanted is gone. I always, I just, there was a void. And no matter how much church I went to, no matter how much prayer and fasting I did, that void was still there. I needed my son to be with me. I needed to be a mother. Hmm. Hmm. So I told him, I put my, so that year... They were coming um, for a program, and I said, I booked, um, I think I have them book, I booked something, a flight or hotel or something, and it was a lot of people from the church that were going to come into the States for this program. And um, so I, that, I had leverage because I knew they were coming, and this was like January, so I was like, um, you know what, this, this year as you're coming, I would like you to come with my son. And of course, the same spill, the same fight. So we fought over it for like a good four months. And I just, I, I just will not, will not give up. So he came, eventually, he came. <laughs> and they, they did some spikes, my mom especially, like she came, she gave me his passport, she gave me his, um, his birth certificate, but she didn't give me his immunization record. And because of that, it was hard for me to enroll him in school. And even when I got homeless, it was hard for us to get in the shelter because we had to have... Like, you are homeless. <laughs> Correct. I don't believe this. Your parents are GOs in Nigeria and you are currently homeless. Correct. I've been homeless for two years. What? Yeah. So where do you live? I live in a shelter um, in California. Wow. LA County. Do they, do your parents know that you're homeless? Yes, they do. They've known right from the beginning. So, okay, sorry. Uh, maybe it's a bad time. Maybe um, they're not making money in Nigeria. What, what do they do? Do they have full-time jobs? Well, I know my dad has, um, he does a lot of real estate, so he has... Um, businesses. What about your mom? Uh, my mom, she, she has a clinic. She has an NGO clinic. Okay, she's a doctor. Um, correct. Correct. And they're not sending you any money to get a house or to assist you in any way? Why? Did you no. stand up to them? No, they said things are hard, I, and I have, the thing is, I have, I have screenshots, like, for everything I'm telling you, I have screenshots. They said things are hard in Nigeria now, and, you know, what's the news, 
um, things are difficult. They will try. Um, and they know you are in a shelter. Yeah, they don't need shelter. It needs to Can be you work? Like Can you work? Or the pain from your condition is making working impossible? Yeah, I can't work. My doctor um, has, has ridden me off work. Um, I can't work. I can't keep to a schedule because fibromyalgia is very unpredictable. Today, I can be pain level 5, tomorrow 6, next tomorrow back to 5, another day 10, 11, 12, like... And then sometimes in the morning, I'm really bad. In the evening, I feel better or vice versa. So it's very unpredictable. And so I can't keep, it's very difficult for me to keep to a schedule because of it. Because hmm. I will go to work and try my best to work. I will go to work sometimes during the middle of the day. I'm like, I have to go home. I mean, I can't do it anymore. Or I'll have to call out of work. But I still make sure that I was an exceptional employee to the point where I got certificates from um, um, at work. At work, for you know, going over and beyond, at, at, you know, at my workplace. Irene says, "I know all about this disability. It is real. It is real. Okay. Um, it is real. Uh, I wouldn't want you to publish the text messages and screenshots yet." Let us hope your parents would watch this video and maybe reach out to you and possibly have a change of heart. What's the name of their church again? El Shaddai Covenant uh, Ministries or El Shaddai Covenant Church. El Shaddai Covenant Church or El Shaddai yeah. Covenant Ministries. And where yeah. are they located? Um, they have almost 30 branches. They're all over Nigeria. And um, I think the main branch is in Lagos, and um, there's one in, in the UK as well. Okay. Um, if you had anything to say to your parents, what would it be? <laughs> That's a difficult one. Because, like, when it comes to reconciliation, I've been trying that my whole life. I've been trying that my whole life, and I've been dragged through the mud. So, honestly, I had to, I had to, in order for me to be free and happy like this, I had to accept that it might never change. I really did. So where is the and love? Don't your parents understand what Christianity is about? It's not about building churches and, and preaching messages if you can't love your own child. Maybe maybe I need to speak with them uh, and hear their side of the story. What do you think? Sure. I mean, definitely you're going to hear a lot of made-up stuff. And I'm not saying it to be funny or anything, but that's the narrative. There's the narrative that they give out. And that's why I keep saying conciliation, it's, it's, I don't see it happening because... They don't even want to be honest, you know what I'm saying? And they don't want reconciliation. They just want me to do what they want. And what is it that they want you to do? Come to Nigeria and start a farm. Wow. Yes. So you have this condition that is not easy to manage, even in the U.S., and they want you to come to Nigeria when everyone else is running away from Nigeria at this point in time. Thank you. They want you to come to Nigeria and start a farm. Correct. They're your parents. I, I'm, I'm not going to judge them, but I, I don't understand what that's going to do in this present situation. Correct. And even afterwards, like, they sent someone to come talk to me and, um, at that time, and he came to see me in Charlotte, and I don't know what he was thinking like you could just tell me oh okay this is the this is the word or this is the order and then you just move ahead and he's like yeah well, we need to come to Lagos and bring Glenn of course and we'll have Glenn enrolled in school so they had problems with me homeschooling my son mm. they didn't want to understand why I was homeschooling him they just pictured it to be this horrible thing okay oh he's doing nothing again and they did not like it and they wanted to change that too okay Okay, someone here knows your dad. He says he's Dr. James O. James. Yes. Is that your dad? That's my dad. Okay, okay. 
Uh, wow. All right, Ovi. Um, I'm sure we're going we're going to talk again um, very soon. Ovi is uh, for those of you who don't know who she is. Ovi is uh, one of the reformers. Uh, she's one person who believes in um, our message. She's of course she's yeah. seen she's seen the inside of the church. She's an ordained pastor. You know. Uh, a lot of people are saying, where in California are you? Some of my people want to reach out with you. Her name is I'm Ovi. I'm in Los Angeles, Los Angeles, California. You're in Los Angeles? LA. LA. Yeah. Okay. Um, a lot of people are going to try to reach out to you through me. So we're going okay. to... Um, we're going to see how we can um, kick that off. And by the way, you know God loves you. Always keep that in mind. God <laughs> loves you. No matter what you're going through, um, God loves you. Quite a lot of people want to reach out to you. Um, Thank we will, you so much, guys. We would, I really appreciate uh, it. We'll talk about that. Um, and I'm going to put the message too on YouTube. So some people are going to watch uh, and get back to me. But in the meantime, okay. take good care of yourself, okay? Thank you. Thank you. And I also wanted to put out that um, I reached out to a lot of people to to, um, to reconcile. I reached out to a lot of church members, family members, and no one could talk to them. No one could talk to your parents? No one. Wow. We need to introduce them to Yahushua. They've been following Jesus for too long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Um, I had to be on my knees and set everything up on the bed so you could have um, the best part of this video. Thank you very Thank much. You so much. Yeah. Just know whatever happens that we love you and um, we'll find a way to bring peace to your heart. I really appreciate it. And my love to Glenn. Me. Okay. All right. Take care. All right. Thank you. With WAVE, you could send money from the convenience of your phone to any Nigerian bank account. The money goes from your bank account here to Nigeria, easy, safe. And the best part is there are absolutely no fees ever, not just on your first transfer, but on every other transfer you make. Download the free WAVE app today from the Google Play Store or from the Apple App Store. Hey, you could also get five pounds or five dollars off your first transfer if you use the promo code Daddy Freeze. Daddy Freeze spelt as one word. It's safe, it's reliable, no fees at all. It's WAVE!